Hi, welcome to Linux Academy. This course is about deploying microservices with Puppet and containers. In this course, we're going to have multiple instructors. My name is Kevin James, and welcome to Linux Academy. What we have here is the portal. This is when you first log in. This is the view you will first see. It will show you things like recent courses you've done. It will show you certificates of completion. It allows you to do things like schedule courses. You can. It'll show you things like learning paths, which is a collection of learning paths, quizzes designed to guide you towards a specific skill set or career. You have bookmarks. Now you can bookmark an item, and it makes it easier to go back to later. And depending on the training that you do, we'll have a recommended for you. So, for instance, if you're doing the running container classes with Kubernetes, you may see these options over the side here. And there are further areas you can go to to continue your training a little further with us. Here's some quick training. But we'll talk about that a little more in the future. Let's have a look at courses. As you can see from courses available to you, we have AWS, Linux, OpenStack, quite a few of them there, including containers. These are all... Have, these all have subsets of different courses available to you, but let's look at the AWS. And it'll show you the different courses we have available. Now, some of them are longer, some of them are shorter. For instance, this one's AWS Essentials, and that's seven hours long. It goes in depth into AWS, of course. If we go down a page, you notice that uh, it auto loads and it, it auto refreshes until, of course, it's run out of content. Go back to the top of the page. Let's have a look at Linux. As you can see, there's a lot of Linux content. A lot of courses you can do. For instance, the LPIC exams. Those are well worthwhile going into. And again, as we go down to a certain point, it refreshes, as you can see. And there's a lot of content there for Linux. There's a lot of content there for a lot of the courses, of course. And it's up to you, the student, to make use of these courses. Let's look at quick training. Quick training that's basically under two hours. You may have a course that you know, might be a little over two hours, but in, in general it's under two hours. And that's where you'll find those. And there's some very useful information under there, under quick training. For instance, AWS Concepts or Vim, the improved editor, Ansible Quick Start. There's quite a few quick starts there as well. Jenkins, Puppet and Docker ones as well. Let's have a look at labs. The labs, they're hands-on scenario-based labs. They give you experience in Linux and the environments. And it's basically a preset environment for you, and it allows you to learn new skills via the lab servers. So let's go to one of the labs. Let's go to configuring bind 9 DNS, and let's click on it. So let's have a look at this one, and let's go into it a little further. As mentioned, this one teaches you DNS and bind, and talks to you about that, but let's start up the lab. We'll go into it further through the lab. We won't go all the way through the lab, because it takes a little while, but we'll at least start it. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to pause a little bit, uh, wait for it to load, and then we'll start. OK, the lab has now finished loading. And if we have a look at it, we have information about the lab itself. We have overview. We have download lab guide. We can download the guide and we can open that later if we wanted to. If you look down here, we have the lab connection information. We have access credentials. So for instance, we have the server IP address for this particular IP address. And uh, the servers are pre-made for this particular lab, so it's pre-made for the configuring by 9 DNS lab. So we can log in, but before we do that, hang on, let's go back to uh, the page. And I'll show you the access credentials. You can see it's Linux Academy, password is 123456, so we'll use that to log in. Ah, oops, sorry. So used to typing that in. So Linux Academy at um, the IP address. Oops, there's a space. Let's remove that. Okay, removed. Let's log in. 
Let's accept the key because it's the first time we've logged into that server. And I've typed in the password. And there we are. And we have some basic information for the virtual machine itself. Now the VM is, of course, specific for this lab, so it's specific for us to do these tasks. So let's exit, because we're not going to do the lab, we just wanted to log in and, and show you what it looks like. Now you'll see the lab expires in 2 hours 55 minutes, and uh, at that point, that's when the lab itself will close and it will delete. And if we need to use it again, we just restart it. So that's how we do that. So later on I'll go back into it and I'll, I'll press complete lab, but for the moment let's go to learning paths. Now, learning paths are collections of courses, challenges and quizzes, and they're designed to guide you towards a specific skill set or career. Now a custom learning path can be created by your organisation. If we have a look down, there's a whole bunch of paths that can be used. And you could choose something like uh, you know, any of the ones here, and they would help you go through learning to be that person, like a cloud developer, for instance. And what path would you need to take to get there? And it's a list, of course, that we suggest um, you take to get to that point in your career. And of course, once you have those, you can, put them, you can click Dashboard, and you'd see them under your learning paths. And that's a quicker way for you to get back to them once you've actually set them up. We'll do community in a moment, but let's servers. Now, I have three servers here already that I'd created earlier. Um, and I don't want to get rid of them, so let's leave them there. Let's start up a new one. Now, with the lab servers, you have six servers available to you uh, when you're a student of the Linux Academy. And as you can see, there's different distributions that can be used to build these servers from scratch. And you can use them for all sorts of things. You can create your own labs, for instance. So let's build up a CentOS 7 one. And we'll create server. And at this point, it'll go off, it'll start. It'll uh, create the server. What it'll do is it'll come up with uh, the status will stay started and you get a public IP address and you get a private IP address. And as you can see, there's the public host names as well. Now, with the public IP address, that's the IP address you would use to connect to it via the console and via your internet, via here. And uh, the private IP address that's used for communications between the servers in the lab, in, in your lab. For instance, say, for instance, those three servers that are up and running, you could connect to them internally via that IP address, the private IP address. So you'd use that IP address. You may have a master server here, you may have a minion or a node there in a cluster, and they'd be connecting via the private IP address. As you can see, we also have the public host name. And it may take a little while for the public host name to resolve in your DNS, but you can also connect to your servers via that host name once it's, once it's set up in the DNS and it's resolving. So you could SSH to it. Yeah, initially, though, that may not be available because it can take a little while for the DNS to actually update with that information. So it's always useful to, to use the IP address to connect to it. And if you look here, you you'll see the default server user and passwords, and the default root password as well. So the default user's user, and you'd use that when you first log in. So let's do that. Let's log into this server, clear all that out, and let's SSH into it. So as you can see, the default user is user, and the default server password is 123456. So let's use that. So look at this user, and it's a new server to us, so you know, it'll, it's asking for us to accept the key. And that's just the first time it's connecting via SSH, so it just wants to save a copy. That's pretty normal. So login is the one, two, three, four, five, six. And the first time we log in here, it will actually ask us to change the password. So let's do that. So the initial, of course, is one, two, three, four, five, six and change it to something else. Let's do that, so, and retype it again to make sure we got it right. And it will kick us out. There we go. So you can see it's kicked us out of that connection, so let's log back in again. Uh, it's 
it's deliberate so it, you use the new password. So there's the new password, and we've logged in. Let's sudo to root. And type in the root password, well, which is our password. If we had just typed sudo, uh, if we had just typed su space dash, then we could have used the one, two, three, four, five, six, as you can see. And it's specified there, one, two, three, four, five, six. Now when we do so, it'll ask us to change it. It's exactly the same as, uh, as the, the user password. So let's type it in. Type the new one again. And we're in as the root user. And there's our server. Let's exit out of there. Okay. Let's jump back to our portal. And that's our running server. You can also connect to it via the, well, if you have problems with the, the company or your internet connection blocking SSH connections, then you can connect to it via the web portal. So let's do that. Here's an example of the web console via the web portal. Type in our user, our new password, and as you can see, we're in. And that's a protect, protected connection, it's HTTPS, so it's secure. Now, I don't need that server anymore, and of course, if I don't log into the server anyway, Within 40 days, it will expire. <laughs> so we'll go back to being nothing, to being uh, blank. Also, if you log out of the, the portal, then the, the virtual machine will also shut down. So let's stop the server. Uh, well, we can choose stop or we can choose delete, but we have to stop it first, so let's do that. And I'll come back to it later and I'll, I'll delete it. But it's not important for us, so let's move on. Now you can see here's the details that are yours, the personal details for managing an account and things. Oh, let's talk about note cards. Let's go to a course. And we'll, we'll get back to community, don't worry. So let's go to a course. And uh, let's choose one like Linux Essentials Certification. Let's have a look at the note cards. Oh, well, before we do, well, let's have a look at the what it is. So we, there's a syllabus, and this shows everything about the course. So it talks about the course itself. It talks about uh, different sections of the course. Now, if this course is about certification, then it's likely the course itself will be structured around the certification. And it will look very similar to what uh, the prerequisites are that are needed for the course. So let's go Details. And this particular one has no extra details. Um, but a lot of them will. So, downloads. These are the downloads available for the course. And as you can see, this one has quite a few. So we have slides, the presentations. We have study sheets, cheat sheets. We have a whole bunch of stuff. So, note cards. Let's have a quick look there. And as you can see, there's several several decks. You have, uh, let's have a look at this one. This is... This one's provided by one of the instructors, instructors. So if you click on them, you can actually see they change. So what is the LS minus R? It's run LS. What's this one? Run level for current user. So just little notes. Let's now go to community. Now community is very powerful. It's very useful. In the community, this is where students can interact with the teachers. And it's very easy for you to create a um, uh, it's very easy for you to, to talk to us and to, for instance, if you pass a certification, come and tell us, let us know. Because we love knowing about that stuff, it's, it's awesome and it really makes, uh, makes our day. Now if you have questions, here's where you can ask a question. So if there's something you want to talk about, like here, any plans for Kubernetes and Docker certification, someone's asked that question and we've answered it. And we look at these every day, so when we get these questions, we look at them and you know, we'll, we'll answer them fairly quickly. So if it's urgent, we'll get, we'll get back to you quite quickly. And we love having comments from, from uh, our guests and from our members because it's, it's awesome. It makes things great. We also have students answer questions. And we also have students uh, put up information there about things that, are, that would be useful for people to know. So. 
So thank you for watching this, and that was a quick overview of Linux Academy in the portal. And uh, I still have that active lab, so let's go back to that, and uh, let's tell it to complete. And that's, that will help shut it down quicker than, rather than waiting all that time. Let's go back to dashboard. And there we go. That is a quick run through of Linux Academy and the portal. My name's Kevin James and thank you very much.